debate raging across the country right now, and in many ways, Washington is the epicenter. We're talking about the confusion between state and federal laws when it comes to medical marijuana. It's legal in Washington, but try telling that to the multiple patients busted in their own homes for growing pot. KXY 4's Colleen O'Brien is here now with her special report. And Colleen, where is this confusion? Well, it all started in early October when a group of hysterical, and I mean hysterical, medical marijuana patients contacted us at KXY and told us that their grow, as well as their neighbor's grow, mm -hmm. was being raided by city police. They displayed their license and medical marijuana cards given to them by doctors. They assumed they were doing everything right. But when you set federal law next to state law, they were actually committing felonies. There was a time in Spokane when medical marijuana dispensaries outnumbered Starbucks coffee shops five to one. They operated freely and openly along busy Spokane streets. And in homes across Spokane, medical marijuana patients tended to their own grows and smoked behind closed doors. I got six herniated discs in my back. I, uh, in 2003, I was told I had lung cancer. In 2005, I was told I had stomach and esophagus cancer. 2009, they removed the esophagus and about two-thirds of the stomach used what was left to make a new esophagus. Marijuana is the only thing Ernest Felch has to make cancer's aftermath tolerable. Because when cancer hit in 2005 and doctors removed his organs, the strapping six-foot-one, 230-pound man withered to 116 pounds. When they told me I had cancer, then I was thinking, you know, if I'm having a problem with my weight, let's try some marijuana. Felch and other medical marijuana patients will tell you the same story of disease and ailments. I was depressed to the point where I was thinking, you know, why am I here anymore? I mean, you know, I, my kids are growing up. I'm going through how to stay alive. For what? A fistful of pills that never seem to work. You know how many side effects pills have? And the miracle marijuana that changed their life. It's helped a lot. I don't think I'd be here right now if I wasn't using it. Finally, with the help of pot, Felch was able to sustain the life cancer had left him with. Until Spokane police officers, fresh off a bust of Felch's neighbor, walked past his house and the wind shifted. Just walking down the street and you could detect odor of marijuana. As it turns out, growing and smoking your own marijuana is a fantasy world. One that came crashing down for Ernest Felch. I felt ripped off. I felt violated. You know, I just felt like I was burglarized. There was little Felch could do as city officers carted away his plants and thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Felch, who has a doctor's note to use medical marijuana and a license to grow, was a criminal in the eyes of the law. He was clearly outside the, uh, the number of plants that you're allowed to have and the uh, maximums the state allows you to have. Felch was growing 100 plants. Washington state law allows patients only 15. But Felch has a doctor's note that says otherwise. And as many plants as the patient feels necessary to maintain the 60-day supply. This is the crossroads where the law and medicine collide in Washington state. A doctor can't prescribe, only recommend marijuana as a treatment. But it's illegal for a doctor to tell you where to get plants or seeds. A medical marijuana patient is allowed 15 plants or a 60-day supply, though the law doesn't define what a 60-day supply looks like. We will hear, well, my doctor told me I could have X, Y, or Z, or, or my friend who's a medical marijuana patient told me, I don't care what those people told you, it's what the RCW says, and it's clearly spelled out in the law. The law doesn't allow you to be a drug dealer. Don't forget the federal government. It has a zero-tolerance policy for marijuana. And that's created some confusion, not only among people that are trying to follow what the state law provides, because it's not entirely clear, but it's completely inconsistent with federal law, which says all marijuana for any reason is illegal. Earlier this year, U.S. Attorney Mike Ormsby gave his officers the okay to begin a raid on Spokane's booming medical marijuana dispensary population. We went from 20 dispensaries to nearly 60 in about a year, and the advertising was getting much more blatant, and then when we found out how many were close to schools, we just had to do something. Ormsby gave the stores 30 days to shut down. Some complied, other owners stood their ground, and were ultimately arrested, sent to jail in a state where marijuana is legal. There are a number of people at the state level that would like to make the law more uh, consistent, but until it is consistent, we're going to enforce the law as it exists at the federal level, and from the federal level, it's very, very clear.
consistency is in the eye of the beholder. During Seattle's annual Hemp Fest celebration, devoted pot smokers didn't need a medical excuse to partake in a toke. They did so openly. Officers stood by, barely batting an eye. 280 miles away in Spokane, a full crackdown is underway. And this is just my personal philosophy. We don't try to pick and choose what laws we're going to enforce. Um, we just try to do our best to follow the laws and uh, enforce the laws that, that the legislature has put forward. Does Spokane have a problem with marijuana? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's prevalent. I will say, I mean, it's very prevalent. Without dispensaries and without clarity about what patients can grow themselves, many turn to the illegal drug trade. Patients like Felch funneling money into the illegal drug operation, Sergeant Hendren and the rest of the Spokane Police Department fight against daily. How does America feel when we spend our money on chasing down a cancer patient and how many marijuana plants he has for his medicine. They'd rather throw me in jail than to go after somebody that's breaking into your house. Today, Felch shuffles around his house, tending to his new crop of plants. Only 15, he's learned his lesson. You don't have to take his word for it, but when asked if his license to smoke was just a convenient cover for a pothead, Felch said he doesn't want to smoke marijuana. He must to survive. I'm not doing real well. They told me I had a 19% chance of living past five years. A healthy person that says, look fortunate for you, you know, he liked to smoke pot. He's obviously just a druggie or whatever. Well, no, I, like I said, that's the only answer I got. I'd give it all in a heartbeat for a healthy body. After talking with Sergeant Hendren, who you saw in black, he's undercover, uh, who, who's been working the drug beat for seven years, I asked him for a solution. How do we get beyond these contradictory federal and state laws? He said a registry would help officers differentiate between legitimate medical marijuana patients and those operating an illegal grow. A registry, he said, would save officers time and money so they could go after the real bad guys. Hmm. And then there's an effort right now to get uh legalizing marijuana on the ballot for next year. Initiative 502, mm -hmm. that's correct. That'll, that'll straighten out a lot of things for patients. Uh, mainly sure. it's going to protect medical marijuana patients mm -hmm. from arrest and from uh, prosecution. Right now the law only gives them a defense when they go to trial. And it sounds, it sounds like federal and state officials, they don't really communicate all that much to resolve and bring more clarity to this. The federal government's pretty firm, no tolerance yeah. for marijuana. Right now the state, as you can see, is trying to work it out, yeah. but it, people like Ernest are getting caught in the middle. Oh, yeah, good God. story. Great Thanks story. so much.